Hello, I'm Ronnie Eldridge. Welcome to Eldridge and Company. I can't remember a time when our legislatures, national, state, and local, have been as cynically viewed as they are now. For instance, a recent Quinnipiac University poll shows that nine out of ten New Yorkers think gover government corruption is a major problem in Albany. Who better to talk about this with than the New York Times editorial writer Eleanor Randolph? And she's my guest today. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So am I romanticizing the past that we didn't <laughs> have this kind of well, things you, going on? Did you see the movie Lincoln? Uh, in that movie, Lincoln, he needed, he needed goons, yeah. so we called him in from Albany. <laughs> so it's, I, I think we have a, a, well, we have a, a pretty sound history here of having uh, some uh, strange things. I, I actually think that one of the things that happened was that when we picked Albany as the site for the state capitol, it was, and this happened in a lot of other states, it's not just yeah. New York, but you know, it, it was away from the population centers. So Which is the interest, right? People get up there and they just think they're invisible. They really do. And you, every once in a while I think, what, what were you thinking? What happened to you? Well, I, there's so many things to talk about because, I mean, you don't, don't know where to start. But with all this corruption and with the way it acts and stuff, uh, the things that are suggested are more uh, controlling and mechanical, but they seem to be the solutions don't come underneath, and that is, how do you elect smarter people? Well, you know, <clears throat> there's some people who think that what should happen uh, and there's some reformers who think that what should happen is that it should be a full-time job, not a part-time job, and that you should pay him more money. Well, I asked the other day, I asked the governor if he, if he were interested in, in that. He, yeah. said, he said it's politically just impossible to get that through. People do not want to pay that their state money. legislators any more money. And, um, and it, there's this sort of myth of the citizen legislature that sounds so wonderful until you sort of go through the details in Albany. It's very hard, isn't it? Because you become, you, you can get to be very elitist in what you're thinking is who should be serving in the legislative body. The governor is proposing changes, but he hasn't submitted any bills yet, has he? Uh, not real bills, no. Not the main thing. I mean, he's talked about campaign finance reform, which has been the darling of our editorial board. Uh, and, uh, and he's talked about public financing of campaigns, which I think it would be um, a real improvement for one reason. Most of these people never compete. They don't have real elections. It's all set up so that they're there. And, and, and one of the few ways you get them out is for if they go to jail now, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so, um, so if you had these uh, public, if you had public financing, everybody thinks that people would say, oh, well, maybe I can afford to run for office. Maybe I could go in there. Um, <clears throat> the governor did a great thing the other day, and I don't usually say that, yeah. but he, um, <laughs> the, um, one of the people that uh, was indicted was uh, a guy named, well, you have to, there were right. about 29 of them, but um, his name was Nelson Castro, and he was an assemblyman and, from the Bronx, and so he resigned from the assembly. Uh, he was the one that was, was wearing, wearing the, the wire. wire. You know, for how many years? Two years. Two years with all his friends. With all his friends, and uh, of course, people in Albany. See in the know. witness protection program now. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. Probably. Uh, they. Um, what the governor did was that he refused to call a special election. That was great because it means that the the uh, political you know bosses uh, right. in the Bronx cannot pick. Right. His replacement. It right. it will actually go to an election, and That's I mean, good. maybe you have no hope that you'll you'll get somebody new and different and wonderful, but you that have is, at least a chance. That is so interesting, and it is so amazing in this in the state of New York. And and let's just even deal with the New York City delegation and the New York City delegation, that these members are able to trade, you know, between Albany, New York City. <laughs> between getting their kids' jobs or their cousins' jobs, getting the offices. I mean, this is supposed to be a sophisticated city, but I don't think these legislative bodies are sophisticated. They're just 
no good. I don't, I don't know how other to explain it. What? You know, I don't. Um, I, I, I don't go mean back. to condemn everybody because there are some really well, good. Well, there's some and people like Liz Kruger, and, state yeah. senator, and yeah. uh, Dan Squadron, yeah. another state senator, and you've got. And what makes them go back every year? I don't. You know, I I don't know how they do that. Yeah. That that must be very very hard. Um, but um, but you know, everybody's trying to figure out why why you've got all this corruption. And part of the reason may be that we're actually looking for it. I mean, the, um, no. the district attorney, what happened, it seemed to me that it started back about four or five years ago when there was this realization that the legislature and the DA in Albany, they couldn't really handle it. So the big guys came in, the feds came in, and so you had uh, the federal prosecution of Joe Bruno, the state uh, Senate mm -hmm. leader, and then uh, Preet Bharara, you know, the mm -hmm. U.S. Uh, District Attorney in the Southern District. He has been the one uh, going after all these people. I mean, he, he's, he's t we've been waiting for somebody to turn over that rock, and he's done and he's it. He's done it. So now, though, there was a, the, the governor announced that he wants to do something with, giving the district attorneys more power to do this, is that? That's, that's right, yeah. he wants, it's, it's a very bizarre thing. I don't know where he's actually gonna go on this. That's why yeah. we do need to see the bills. One of the things he said he was gonna do is set up this separate yeah. investigative, or investigator. And so uh, everybody said, well, what he about said, the who, who appoints that investigator? And also, why don't you just give the authority to the attorney general? To the attorney general. To but he Eric doesn't Schneider. like the attorney general. He doesn't like the attorney general. <laughs> so it's, so so it's never like ending. It. I mean, that's why it makes it all so impossible. I know. It? Yeah. It's theater. I, the, my theory is, it's not my theory, but you said before that these people barely get elected. It was good that you don't have a, a, a prior, you know, a special election for. Them. If you look at how the, they get elected, the votes are what ten thousand votes or less yes. gets you elected to the state legislature yeah. or to the, the city council. That's because people aren't voting. Now, why aren't they voting? I, I remember back in the past when I did romanticize, I guess, and it was before massive television, it was before all of that, but they taught civics in junior high school. <laughs> and civics was a very important subject because we learned that, you know, about a community and about how it runs and, and a citizen's responsibility. And it was a very, I haven't missed a primary election or a general election since I first voted in 1952. It, it's important to me. I wouldn't miss an election for anything in the world, but look at all the people who don't vote. I think you're right. I think they need to tell young people that this is, yeah. this is, how you, this is what's special about where you live here in America. Uh, but, uh, but the other thing, I mean, there are a lot of reasons I think that people don't vote. Uh, one of them is if they don't have a choice, I mean, if there's yeah. only, I don't know, I go into the yeah. uh, polling booth all the time and there's one person and that person's name can be on every single, single line. Right across the, yeah. You know, it's just crazy. That's one of the things that Cuomo is trying to change too. I don't think he can change it. But, but letting a candidate run on more than one line. Right, right. I mean, that's so New York, it's so uh, bizarre. But then it's also registering to vote and then, you know, where are you going to vote and all that kind of, all those things that make it very difficult here and it makes it very hard. But the other thing was that you, you learned when you took civics how the political process worked. And, and I guess, because I love pol just the idea of politics, but I couldn't wait to join my local Democratic club, which <laughs> at the time was one of the first reform clubs in the city. Um, the whole lore of it, you know, you became part of it. So you saw that there would be another candidate on the ballot. How do you organize people to do that? Uh, that's Isn't the hardest thing. I mean, I grew up in the South, so yeah. uh, politics was something that it was, it was theater. It was, you know, uh, where, Huey Long. What state were you in? Florida, uh. Uh, which was, uh, it was not known for corruption, but that didn't mean it wasn't corrupt. It was, you know, yeah. very, as it turns out. But um, I, I think actually the amount of corruption is another thing that's making people nervous about yeah, voting. They don't want to do it. They don't. Yeah. They don't want to do it. And this is one of the things I, I went to see Anne. Um, you know about yeah. Anne Richards, and so um, Holland Taylor does it. And she, 
she does this speech by Ann Richards, and she, sa she talks about how important it is to get involved, even if you know that you're going to get slammed, even if you know there's gonna be, you're going to be traipsing through mud all the time. Uh, it's yeah, so it's much important, so there's so much um, going on and you, can, and you can make a difference. I think that's what keeps people like Liz Kruger going back yeah, to Albany. Yeah. It is, it's a hope that you can make a difference, hope, but then you yeah. turn around and, I mean, this last thing was, was just so dumb to the first place, <laughs> how, how Senator Smith thinks he could have run for mayor to begin with, no less to make a deal and buy a, I, that's what I don't understand. <laughs> well, you know, um, I think Bloomberg sort of paved the way for thinking that, you know, if you can't make it in the Democratic primary, by the Republican uh, primary, yeah. and you, then you can, you know, there's a chance. Um, it 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 doesn't make sense to the the Wilson Pakula thing that we talk about a lot, which is which means that the leaders of those parties uh, have to allow you to run on their line if you're if you're a Democrat, uh, and um, so so the payoff of those leaders was just. It was just incredibly blatant and, as you say, dumb. Um, but it it showed how crazy <laughs> this system is. Mm -hmm. But you know, Cuomo's trying to change it. He's not going to be able to change it. You cannot imagine the forces against changing that. I mean, the conservative party, the head of the conservative party, has basically warned Republicans if they vote to change this ability to, you know people for their line, if the, if the Republicans in Albany vote for that, he's going to go after them. He's going to primary them. He said, I'm going to make your life miserable. So they're scaredy cats, so they're not going to do it. And that's the other problem is that these are careers now, and they're on a career ladder, or it's just, I'm going to take this office and stay there forever. Um, that's when I was referring before to the elitist thing. When I was young, I thought you, you stood for something, so you ran for public office because you wanted to make a change. And if you couldn't do it, then you'd leave and you'd go do something else. But these guys really can't leave where they don't want to leave because, or they want to move up to the next thing, so everything's calculated, isn't that? Um, that's true. I, I guess it has to be cal You know, thinking about that a little bit, the, yeah. I, one of the things I w wish, I, if you could do anything you wanted to do, one of the things I wish is that voters would ask people running for office, what do you want, what kind of difference do you want to make? What do you actually want to do? You know, yeah. what do you want to create yeah. in this office? Not just what, you know, uh, do what? you want to just sit there and... Yeah. How do you feel about affordable housing? Well, we know how everybody's going to feel about affordable housing. Right? Of course. You're against <laughs> it? No. <Right. laughs> Secretly. No. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, it's just... I, I don't ever feel from a lot of these people uh, what it is they want to get done. You know, what drives them. I mean, it's just what you're talking yeah. about. You know, it's what, a job. If it's just a job, you yeah. know, it's, well, even jobs, you know. Okay. But there is, on the other hand, there is something special about political people, right? I think they enjoy a give and take and talking to people. There's no doubt about that. But. But if they don't have the basic principle or goal, that's when I think we run into trouble. Yeah. It's true. I, you know, the other thing that I've learned over these many years covering politicians is that I was very naive about being critical about <clears throat> ambition. You know, I used to think, I mean, maybe, maybe it was being raised in the South. Yeah. I don't know. But I, I always used to think, oh, gosh, she's so ambitious. Well, now, being a woman. Maybe. I Maybe. always thought that was my problem. Maybe that was yeah. it. Uh, but I always thought that, I mean, and, and now I think that ambition is a very important part of, part of the yeah. equation. You know, people always say about uh, Andrew Cuomo, he's so ambition, yeah. ambitious. But that's one of the things that drives him to do some of the better things, like the gun control law, right. you know, and uh, same-sex marriage. That's, okay. so, that's so interesting. That's really important. When I was growing up, it was if you voted for yourself in a school election, you were being, you were embarrassed. You couldn't do that or you'd be conceited, right? You'd right. never hear of that word right. anymore. Right. If I had been more ambitious, I mean, I would have, should have run for borough president or done something like that. But I would never think that I could, don't yeah. even talk about it, right? You're right. That's it's, girl stuff. It is. It, it is. really is. But, uh, you know, 
the state legislature is so important and it's so key to what's going on in Washington because all of these state legislatures are the ones who you know, apportion the congressional districts. I know. I, that should be a greater impetus for people to pay more attention to those elections. You know, people are just, <clears throat> just starting to realize that that imports. I, I talk about redistricting all the time and people, you know, fall asleep as, the eyes as, a, yeah. as you mention it. But, and actually New York on the congressional level did pretty well because all those maps yeah. Common Cause was fabulous during that. They created maps, That's and true. then when it was bounced to the judiciary, the the, the judiciary uh, created maps that were very close to what Common Cause had created, and they are they're not bad in New York, but these other states, you know, I mean, um, it's incredible. Gail Collins was always trying to have a contest to see which was the <laughs> worst state legislature and apparently she just got you know tons of mail from or email from people saying oh you know I live in Kentucky mine is the absolute <laughs> dog level worst in the country so, so it, it, because it results in states that may have for instance more Democrats but then it elects more Republicans because of the way the lines have been drawn to protect them I mean if people only understood that and the, if you say common cause had this great contribution to making the, the redistricting better in and that's another impetus for people to get involved in these things. That's exactly right. Yeah. That would be so great. Yeah. yeah. It's hard for people to to realize what redistricting does, you know. I mean the mo the best thing you can do is make fun of the m maps. You know, there's one there's one upstate senate <clears throat> map that um, Nyberg has said it looks like Lincoln riding a vacuum cleaner, you know, and <laughs> it's only when you look at these maps that you think, why does that little tendril go out there, you know, and it picks up the There's three something. Republicans that live in that, you know, District. that little town. So the Times, you're, you're, you really are on a tear about doing this and, and referring. Do you find the other newspapers in the state, I mean, do you read other editorials and follow all of that? I do. So yeah. I, um, there's some, I mean, like the uh, Albany Times Union has very good editorials, I think. Uh, and I re Gannett is interesting. They sort of do both sides. They're, they're more measured <laughs> than yeah. we are. Um, I don't know whether it's beating our heads up against the wall of Albany, but uh, do, I keep doing it. Do you find that the news in the paper reflects, do they report enough about what's going on? Well, you know, um, the Times does, and so does the Daily News, uh, and sometimes the New York Post. Uh, when but, it's scandalous. Right? Oh, yeah, they like scandal. <laughs> any scandal. Uh, they were very pro Andrew Cuomo until um, <laughs> the gun uh, law passed, and then they just turned on a dime, and they sort of have been going after him ever since. But if there's, I don't, there are not as many reporters in Albany co covering the legislature as there mm -hmm. were and I keep hoping you know that Twitter or something like that will yeah. just keep will open it up uh, yeah. I mean you do um, you do hear about things more quickly like the Republican upstate that got caught smoking grass and right. driving you know and that sort of thing <laughs> you know but um, but the big hard stories um, it's it's going to take the Times or, or, in some cases, the Daily News. In the city government, when there's all this discussion about the Lulus, I mean, you know, the member items. Now, the member items in themselves, I don't think are so bad, the idea of it. Because I remember when I was in the council, I was able to fund some very small nonprofits that I thought were really terrific that ordinarily weren't going to get it and that $3,000 or $4,000 made a difference to. I mean, some of my colleagues would buy a bus with their name on it and stuff like that, which <laughs> I thought didn't really help. But all of that, isn't that all public information so that if we really had good, attentive reporting, people would know about it and that might straighten it out also? The it disclosure. Is. It's supposed to be. Uh, I think Chris Quinn has done a pretty good job of opening a lot of that up in the city yeah. level. The state is really interesting because what has happened over the last um, two years, Cuomo has, has stopped all member items in the state. And so, um, and that's hurt small groups, as you can yeah. imagine, that were hoping on $10,000 yeah. to redo the baseball field or something like that. 
but uh, what he's done is he's actually taken control over that money. And there's, um, there's about $3 billion worth of member items that he essentially controls. And they are, uh, and, and, and nobody's really looked at this very closely. I mean, we're just beginning to realize that that big po pocket of money has moved from the legislature to the governor's office. And so, I don't know, my own, my own experience covering Albany is when you have a big pot of money, you need to really watch it, watch it. very carefully. Yeah, somebody in the city council went to jail over that, I think, um, from Washington Heights, I forget what it was, but he had all this uh, domestic violence money, it was a pot. Uh -huh. And uh, I know <laughs> because I was part of a program that could never get any of it, but anyway, um, it, but that's important. That, that following up, I mean, I always, that was another thing that I grew up with was the fourth estate was the protector of the public against the government, but I know. it doesn't happen too often. Well, we're all so, I mean, that's in, in such flux right now, you know? I mean, mm. we're, we've got, um, on a national level, like Politico is a must read, and even more of a must read sometimes in the Washington Post. Well, that is that is huge. That's, yeah. a, that's a tidal wave of change. Yeah. And uh, so, that's but it hasn't come to city and state Public, government. Yeah. Oh, it has, I was gonna ask you, are there any things like that in the state or city? Well, there are a few blogs that are very, very good. Um, the Daily News has a good one, and uh, Capital Tonight has a good one, and city and state Mm -hmm. uh, is a good one. Um, the Times uh, has uh, a good one. It, and, and those are, are closer to sort of covering local news, but the stuff I was talking about earlier, the big stuff, the mm. big investigations, you just need money to do that. Mm. It's impossible to do it without money. So you have to find that funding source, but who would that be? I don't even that's a good question. We're, we're, if you can figure that one okay. out, we all want to know. You know, one of my other pet peeves, and everybody always looks at me as if I'm crazy, is the tradition of the speaker. I mean, that, that position, is that written into the Constitution? You know, parts of it are, but I don't... I, I, I fail. I can't understand. I was looking up how many votes people did get and stuff. <laughs> Shelley Silver gets elected with a minimum amount of votes. I know. He's and look at the control he exerts. Now, <laughs> how do you rationalize that? I, I can't rationalize it. Uh, uh, you know, there have often been, I mean, he has such a majority in the assembly that, and he is very, very smart about figuring out how to do what his Democratic members want. Um, there, there have always been rumors, now the Cuomo people have denied it, but there have always been rumors that Cuomo wants a different uh, uh, speaker, a guy named Joe Morelli, who's from upstate, sort of, the, and as soon as anybody downstate hears that, you know, from the city, they say, oh no, you know, we need a city person to be the speaker yeah. to have that, all that power. Why so, does he want somebody else? I think he... Well, Shelley Silver is notoriously difficult to work with, you know. He keeps <laughs> his cards close to his vest. You sort of never know what he's thinking until he's thought it, you know. And, and, um, and his control is, um, the members are, are, are his control, not, not negotiating with yeah. um, the, uh, the, the governor. The state senate and the governor. He's always listening to his members. Do you, if you were to ask him the question that you said you always wanted to ask a candidate, uh, I don't. Uh, what would it be his answer? Do you know? Oh, I think he might come up with a list of things that he's done. I mean, he he might have an easy time with that, uh, easier than some of the other people because he actually does have power to get things done. Yeah. There are a lot of people there who, I, I don't know how they live with the tiny bit that they can get done. Yeah. Especially if you're a Republican in the Absolutely. assembly, you know. Yeah. Well, you like to be called honorable. So that's another one of my favorite things. <laughs> Do you have any idea how that practice came about? I don't know, maybe to stop them from punching each other <laughs> out Years on ago, the floor. I was elected a district leader. And all of a sudden, the mail started coming, honorable Ronnie Eldridge. And I'm, there I am, 
down at Tammany Hall, because in those days it was still <laughs> Tammany control. <laughs> I'm looking at all these people, and they're all honorable. And they walk into a room. I mean, it's another, it's interesting, because it's another assumption that these people really know what they're doing. And they don't, you know. A, a, a public official comes into a meeting or something, and they're introduced as the honorable. Everybody applauds. But there's nothing honorable about them at all. <laughs> <laughs> nothing newly on. Yeah. Well, it's true. You know, in Albany, you really watch uh, people, um, you know, people like Vito Lopez, who's, who's really been shoved in a corner as close as you can, as that's possible in the assembly. But he's still honorable, and people see, you know, so yeah. back up when he comes in, give him a chair, you know. I mean, it is the best possible treatment you can get sort of on that level right. anyway. And it, it's just an amazing thing to me, but it's also intimidating to the public, I think. You know, I always, I'm always astonished at the number of people who think that other people know what they're doing. You know, the one thing is, though, I was, I've been talking to a couple of people who say that, um, that who their legislators, legislators in Albany who say, you know, I don't like to tell people what I actually do for a living. And it's the other way. Yeah. And they, uh, <clears throat> they say, um, and there was one guy who <clears throat> was a legislator, uh, uh, an assembly, Republican assembly member for a couple of years, and he took it off of his uh, vitae. He just decided it, was, <laughs> it would be a, a bounce point, you know. So he for, was most likely smart. Yeah, <laughs> it got out. So we really wanted him. <laughs> That's right. I can't be. begin to tell you that this has been so enjoyable and a half hour's over. Oh, it is? So okay. I want to <laughs> thank you because I think that um, your attention to the state government is really helping. And I oh, hope, I hope, so. I hope that people really get involved and watch what's going on because when they see what's going on, what? Will there be a change? We hope they vote. Yeah. Or run. Right. That'd be great. Great. Thanks so much. <laughs> thank you, Eleanor Randolph. Thank you, Ronnie. If there are any people you'd like to hear and topics you'd like us to explore, please let me know. You can write to me at CUNY TV, 365 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10016. Or you can go to the website at cuny.tv and click on Contact Us. I look forward to hearing from you.